It's two miles north of Beltway Exit 32. Now let's take a look at the Calvert Hall record so far this year. There it is. As we can see, uh, there's been a tremendous amount of scoring on the part of this Calvert Hall team, uh, obviously being very successful against every opponent, just about every opponent they've gone up against this year. This Calvert Hall team has racked up almost 3,000 yards thus far this year while holding their opponents to just under 2,000 yards. And they're just loaded with offensive weapons and their running backs and the quarterback, as we've seen all season, has been able to get out there and perform and really get this team going and, and sustaining drives and what have you. And I think we have a stat coming up now showing the very scoring on the part. It's really pretty well balanced. McPherson at the top with nine touchdowns. Uh, and he's, and he's a super back. Yep, that, that is not a surprise. He yep. is really an outstanding back. You also notice, and, and of course, the people have never seen a Coward Hall game, they have a running fullback system with three separate quarterbacks, and there they are in the uh, number two and three spots, at least two of them. Healy's not there, but they are leading scorers on this team, and they only play once every three downs. That's right. right. <laughs> So they do a job. Well, that's a good example of the depth on the part of this offensive unit, that they can bring the individuals in off the team and they can produce. And here were so the rushing leaders, again, McPherson at the top, 514 yards. Uh, and you just look at it all the way down the line, Carter, Harris, Saunders, Healy, and Freitag and Lyles. Notice you know. those averages, 7.0, 6.9, 8.0, 8.2. Those are awfully good running averages. That shows you what they they're, they're, doing. Yes, you know, right. they're creating the holes for these backs to get loose, and obviously they're doing a good job. And Calvert Hall has improved. I think I think they've made some adjustments, and I think it's shown over the last several weeks. I think uh, their Northwestern win was a big win for them, and uh, and I think also in this game they they, they want to win. Uh, uh, Coach Maselli was saying that a lot of their kids are in the same neighborhoods as the Delaney kids, so there's a good friendly rivalry. So the kids are up for the game, but I suspect that maybe uh, Coach Maselli might be also looking forward to Loyola down the road a little bit. <laughs> I know he wants to win this game, but he's also going to use it as a tune-up, really, sure, to, sure. To, to see what his kids can uh, can do in anticipating for their big uh, Thanksgiving uh, game with uh, Loyola. One thing we do know, this team is not played by the injuries that uh, Delaney, unfortunately, has to deal with today, having uh, lost some five starters out of their team. So it should be really be an offensive show. Right? That, that's right, Dennis, because what had happened, Charlie Trimble, their quarterback, had been shaken up, mm -hmm. but he's fine now. He will start today. And uh, so they're uh, virtually up to strength, and I think we're going to go. Now, guys, I have one thing I want you to talk about a little bit. As we walked out on the field, uh, all of us were just about blown off our feet by this wind that's coming across the field. That is going to affect the passing. As we look at Thetter's records, he has nine interceptions on the year, and Trimble has four. As an ex-quarterback, I can tell you there's a definite influence on the ball today. So oh, what absolutely. are they going to do? Is it going to be a running game today? Well, I, I would certainly believe that they're going to run unless they're forced into passing. There's a time when you have to do it, and I think if they have to, they will, uh, almost in a desperation move. But, Carl, in addition to that, the kicking game will be affected. It would, there's your, your win. There, there, there's, uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's going to be an obvious fact on the ball game today. And uh, they're, they're more than likely probably will keep the ball on ground, going to the air in order to keep the defensive on it. But it's so cold out today, these guys' hands are really going to be That's right. a little slick, so uh, it's going to be tough to try to make and, exceptions out there. And I wouldn't be surprised because of the wind factor that the team winning the toss may elect to, uh, to take uh, select the goal so that they'll have the win at their backs. Good but I'll, I'll be curious to find out what, uh, what coach will decide on that. Well, gentlemen, we return with more after these messages. <laughs> Now is the time Podium or 9617 Liberty Road in Randallstown today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the seniors on the Delaney squad who will be playing their last game for the visiting Lions. Number seven, Rick Better. Number 10, Neil Alt. Number 11, Doug Amaker. Number 20, Sal Najamian. 31, oh, 30, 34, Michael Armstrong. 32, Tomac Aiken. Here's Michael Armstrong. Mike Patoxi. Number 53, Pat Cormley. Number 54, Tim Donahue. Number 55, John Nosmack. Number 56, Stephen Gohm. Number 58, Dave Jordahl. Number 65, Charles 
Leonard. Number 73, Scott Powderly. Number 87, Bruce Auslander. Number 88, Steve Wheeler. Orville Kaufman, head coach. Assistant coach, Ted Murray. Paul Miles. And Charles Klimek. And now the Calvert Hall seniors play their last home contest for the Hall. Number 10, Billy Mojica. Number 11, Chuck Trimble. Number 12, Al Farrow. Number 26, Ernie Ziddle. Number 35, Zakito Banks. Number 40, Troy Young. Number 41, Garrick McPherson. Number 42, Chris Violante. Number 50, Brett Bennett. Number 55, John Duberick. Number 62, Joe Bannock. Number 66, Tim Morey. Number 70, Joe Barber. Number 73, Chuck Conka. Number 80, Mike Smith. Number 83, Butch Wilson. Number 84, Kevin Burr. Number 87, John Wilson. Number 88, Marvel Choco. Head coach, Augie Maselli. Assistant coaches, Lou Ackrell. Jim Lamb. Pat Conka. Doug Williams. Rudy Wilhelm. Kevin Ender. And Tom Norris. Just a few minutes away from the toss of the coin, gentlemen. It's a lot of seniors on the Calvert Hall team. After returning three this year, they're graduating all those men. They're going to be in trouble next year, Coach. Uh, I think Calvert Hall will be back in next year. You know, taking a look at these two squads as they're huddled up getting ready for the start of this game, you can really see the difference in size as, as, well, as, as well as the number of manpower. Uh, yeah, Calvert Hall team got an awful lot of ball players to pick from. Yeah, that has been impressive. That, that's true. As you see them in their warm-ups, and they're all over the field. That's right. But I think Delaney, Delaney uh, realizes this is a great opportunity for them. I think they would like to uh, show that their program is a, is a successful one, and I'm sure they're going to give everything they have. It might be interesting to, to note that there is a, a definite reason why uh, a county team like Delaney has not played a, a, an MSA team like a Calvert Hall. Uh, having to do with the scheduling that the county will allow them to that's do. That's exactly right. They, they are committed to a, a certain number of games on their own schedule, and this has made it difficult, not only in, the, in football, but in other sports, although in the other sports, they're a bit freer. And of course, remember that the county teams are, are thinking in terms of the state playoffs, and so are really more concerned with, with their public school schedule. We'll be back with the start of the game in a moment. Since 